We would like to start a regular press conference by Polish Minister Hayashi. The floor is yours, sir. Well, thank you. First of all, I would like to talk about the situation in Ukraine. Russia's invasion in Ukraine infringes on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and is a serious violation of international law that forbids the use of force. It shakes the foundation of international law that does not tolerate unilateral changes to status quo by force. Uh, despite the strong international condemnation, Russia is expanding its aggression into Ukraine, which is something which can never be tolerated. We condemn it uh, in the strongest term. Following March the 4th attack on Zapolitsha nuclear power plant, on the 6th, attack was made on Kharkiv Nuclear Technology Institute. As a country who experienced the typical Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station accident, Japan can never tolerate Russia's brutal conduct. Also, Belarus is uh, enabling uh, Russian invasion on Ukraine by allowing use of their own territory. Clear involvement of Belarus in the invasion cannot be overlooked by Japan. Based on the situation of Ukraine, today, Cabinet uh, decided on additional sanction measures. Concretely, freezing of assets of individuals relevant to Russia and Belarus, export ban on equipment related to oil refinery facilities destined for Russia, export ban to military related organization in Belarus, ban exports of dual use goods considered to benefit the strengthening of Belarus military capacity and capability. It's important to show our solidarity with Ukraine from this viewpoint in order to provide non-lethal supplies within the bounds of SDF law and three principles on defense equipment and technology transfer, namely to supply bulletproof best helmet, winter clothing, tent, camera, as well as sanitary goods, food for emergency and power generators aboard SDF aircraft. Exchange of notes will be signed today after this with Ambassador Korusinski of Ukraine to Japan. Uh, to support people of Ukraine faced with national crisis, we like to deliver these supplies as soon as possible. We stand by people of Ukraine who are doing everything they can to preserve sovereignty territory and their motherland and family. We will work closely with the international community, including G7, toward improving the situation. Thank you. That's it from me. You have a question, please raise your hand when you are call called upon. Use the nearest microphone, give us your name and affiliation. Any questions? Miki san, Nick Gay. Nick Gay, Miki, about Ukraine. As the minister mentioned, the attacks on the nuclear power plant, but this time, regarding Russia's actions, the there have been points out, points have been made that it's actually the breach of international law and uh, for Geneva Convention, they say it's, it's contributing that because of the indiscriminate attacks and the bombs of fuel air explosion. What's the government's take? And also ICC reportedly is going to investigate, but certain time would take, it would need certain time that it, it, that the, they cannot be the uh, well, first judge. Of all, about uh, Russia, who had uh, uh, sent military troops within the territory of Ukraine without the consent of Ukraine. And uh, this uh, military activity constitutes the illegal use of force that is prohibited by UN Charter Article 2 4. And also, in terms of international humanitarian law, the military activities uh, should be limited to the military target. Of course, the details are not clear, but uh, if the attack which runs counter to the uh, said stipulation, then in addition to the Article 2-4 of UN Charter, it also violates international humanitarian law. In the G7 Foreign Minister's joint statement issued in March the 4th, he talked about uh, the immense humanitarian damage dealt by the sustained attack by Russia on the civilians of various different cities of Ukraine. 
uh, which is, uh, of course, prohibited by international humanitarian law. An indiscriminate attack is something which can never be tolerated. And uh, uh, we really uh, seriously see the situation where many of the civilians have been victimized in Ukraine. And you talked about uh, ICC. And as for the system to penalize the violation of international humanitarian law, there exists ICC. Prosecutors of ICC had already started their investigation into the situation in Ukraine. We know that. But at any rate, the Russian invasion into Ukraine is the unilateral changes to the status quo by force, which shakes the foundation of international order. It is a blatant violation of international law, which could never be tolerated. We strongly condemn it. Next question, Asahi Shimbun. Aywara, please. About Northern Territories, four islands. Then this budget meeting, Prime Minister Kishida, he mentioned that those are the inherent territories. And also in today's meeting, he, Prime Minister mentioned something similar. From the diplomatic viewpoint, that those are the islands that we have sovereignty over. That was the expression. I have two questions, though. This time, inherent the territories for one. It was used after a long while, but for diplomatic views about Japan-Russia relations, the current situation is difficult. Is that your take? Yes. With regard to the Northern Territories, uh, this is the island uh, over which Japan has a sovereignty, and this is an inherent part of Japanese territory, and uh, our position is unchanged uh, on this point. Well, so far, you said that uh, this word has not been used. But from the diplomatic point of view, these are the islands over we have a sovereignty. This is a term, but in view of the situation, as for the outlook for negotiating the Treaty of Peace, at this time, there is no prospect for that. Nothing can be said that resolving the Northern Territory issue and then uh, conclude the peace treaty is the consistent to position Japan, which remains to be unchanged. But uh, at this time, we cannot uh, see any prospect in future on that, nothing to say about that. That is why we have said that uh, this is an inherent part of Japanese territory, and these are the islands over which Japan has a sovereignty. Uh, this is why we are using these terms. Next question, please. Sugimoto-san, Sankei newspaper. Sankei, Sugimoto. In relation to the previous questions, uh, inherent territories, that expression, it hasn't been used for a while, but in the past about northern territories, illegal s s occupation, I think that was the expression used. To, uh, still, the MoFa's homepage uses such expressions, but in your recognition, it's illegally occupied by Russia. Is that your recognition? With regard to the occupation of the Northern Territory by Russia is something which has no legal grounds. There is no legal ground, therefore we call it illegal. Next question, please. Yomiuri newspaper, Abe-san. Yomiuri Abe, yesterday when E, foreign minister, had a press conference. In, I have two questions. One E, in yesterday's press conference about Russia and the Ukraine situation, he, he showed willingness to mediate. What is your take on this? And so Japan-China relations. Still, it's uh, still faced still with challenge. What was to that effect was mentioned by Mr. Wan Yi. What's your take on this? And also your diplomacy vis-a-vis -vis China, please. Yes, with regard to the uh, mediation, I'm aware of the remarks made by State Councillor Wan Yi. I would refrain from commenting on individual remarks made by countries regarding the uh, Ukraine situation, but at any rate, 
Russia's invasion of Ukraine is an unilateral attempt to change the status quo by force, shaking the foundation of international order. This is a blatant violation of international law. It is totally unacceptable. We condemn it strongly. Now is the time for international community to unite and safeguard foundation of international order and act resolutely in coordination with the relevant countries. We call upon China to behave responsibly. And also, about uh, uh, Japan-China relationship, uh, I know about the remarks made by State Councilor. Between Japan and China, because we are neighbors, various pending issues exist. But at the same time, Japan-China relations is not only important for our bilateral relationship, but also important for peace and prosperity of the region and international community. State what needs to be stated and seek responsible behavior and cooperate on common challenges. Such a constructive and stable Japan-China relations should be built through mutual effort. Next question, please. Ibarra-san, please. Asahi Shimbun. Going back to Russia, changing the subject, information control, then the, the law was passed to strengthen that. The, if the government thinks it's fraud, that it, imprisonment, imprisonment for 15 years, up to 15 years, can be imposed on in including Japan, the, the other countries' media are not the, the, the reporters suspended. What's your take? The Russia's invasion into Ukraine is a conduct that shakes the foundation of international order. It's a blatant violation of international law, and we strongly condemn it. Under the circumstances in Russia, the legislation has been enacted, which constrains the freedom of press. And also, in response to that, it couldn't but the foreign media had to suspend their activities within Russia. We are very much concerned about that. At the G7 Foreign Minister's statement issued on the 4th, we condemn that the Russian government and government-related uh, media are widely disseminating the disinformation, misinformation to enable the military aggression into Ukraine. Any other questions? Lastly, IWJ, be brief, please. IWJ, Hamamoto is my name. Matsuno, Chief Cabinet Secretary on the seventh press conference about the Sakhalin 1 2 project for energy stable supply is important, and he would be careful in judging whether he is going to withdraw from the project or not. About the withdrawal, what is your take, Minister Hayashi and the U.S. government, and also the, those people who are related to energy policies to Japanese government or the MOFA, any request to withdraw from the Sakhalin? We are aware of the press report that the uh, U.S. is uh, considering the import ban of uh, Russian oil. As far as we are concerned, based on the situation as it unfolds, we will remain in close coordination with the international community and G7 and uh, appropriately respond and examine the effective measures and efforts. With this, we would like to conclude the press conference. Thank you.